Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this time we're going to talk about option buttons, otherwise known as radio buttons. To do that, I'm in this employees form in the Northwind sample database. And it's got some cool controls on this form that we can reverse engineer, and we will in the next screencast, such as how did they get this picture, greeny as it is, on these forms. Also, this tab control helps us organize the controls. For this particular screencast, we're going to talk about option buttons, otherwise known as radio buttons, and how we place those on the form and why we use them. The scenario is that each employee can belong to a red, white, or blue team. As we move through these records, we see that the different employee is assigned to a different team. Steve is assigned to blue, Michael to blue, Robert to red, and Laura, when there is no option button selected, has not been assigned to a team yet. The key issue for option buttons, otherwise known as radio buttons, is as you click them, the bouncing ball moves between them. You only use option buttons for a field that has a small set of values that are mutually exclusive and that you can define before you create the option buttons. One time I made the mistake of creating a form with several different option buttons and users love them as opposed to drop down lists because I can select a team with one click, whereas if I want to change her title of courtesy, it's always going to be two clicks. Click to get the drop down list and then to click to get the new title of courtesy. So users love radio buttons. They're super easy to use. However, they do have the downside that it only makes sense for a small number of values because each value takes room on the form. Also, those values must be static. Because if I add a new title of courtesy, a combo box will automatically show that value the next time that form is opened. Whereas with radio buttons, I'd have to come into the design view of the form and add a new option button if I added a green theme. So that's a huge disadvantage to option buttons or radio buttons that you need to be aware of. But let's create this from scratch. First, I'm going to go into design view, click on that personal info tab, click on that option group, and just delete it. And let's see how to add this from scratch. When you want a field to be an option group, radio buttons on a form, first thing, of course, is to make a field in the table that it updates that relates to that field that can store that information. For option buttons, radio buttons, your data type is going to be a number, and I'll show you how to relate that to text later. So I've got a field named team, I've got its data type as number in the employees table. I'm ready to go. Now I'm going to go back and open up that employees form, which is based on that table, and I can tell that by looking at the property sheet of the form on the data tab, the record sources employees, so all of the fields the employees table are going to be available for me. I'm going to go to that personal info tab and add that team field right back up here as option button. To do that, I could drag the team field from the field list to the form. But of course, the natural tendency is to give you a label and a text box, and that's not what we want. So I have to go up to the controls area and find my option group. If I click the option group and I see that my control wizard's buttons selected, the control wizard, the option group wizard, is going to help me add an option group with option buttons to this form. So first, it's saying, what label do you want for each option, for each radio button? And I want red, white, and blue. I'm going to add the green theme as well. Next, do you want a default choice? And I can choose that. But no, I don't want to default. I want to be forced to choose a new option for each new record. Next. Now, we're seeing how the label names of red, white, and blue are relating to the numeric values that the option buttons are going to hold. I could change those values if I wanted. They have to be numbers. Next. Which field do I want to store these values in? And I'm going to choose the team field that I added with a number data type in table design view. Next. And then some styling questions. Do you want these to be option buttons? Do you want them to be check boxes? Do you want them to be toggle buttons? I think from a visual clarity standpoint, the most straightforward and intuitive is definitely the option button. 
And then there's different ways you can make the box, the option group around it look. I'm going to go with etched next. And what caption do you want for the option group? I'm going to say choose a team colon as the caption for the whole entire group and finish. And we can see how this looks now in design view. There's a label. If I double click that label, I open up the property sheet for the label. There's an option group whose control source is bound to the team field. And there's these different option buttons, each with a different value. So if you wanted blue to be number one, you could change it here. Red to be number two, and so forth. But you can see the exact number that this choice, this textual choice, connected to here in the property sheet. If I save this and go up into form view, I can see how this looks on form view. I've chosen white, Nancy DeVolio. And as I go through these records, you can see which team it's chosen. And if I click green for Steve here, you can see that the bouncing ball moves between these option buttons. And that's what you're going for because these are mutually exclusive options. You can see how it works really well for a small number of options. But if you want to choose between the 50 states or if you want to choose between titles that were constantly being modified and added to and changed, then you want to go with a combo box because that drop down list will automatically populate with the latest values as they're changed behind the scenes. Whereas if we add a new yellow team here, I have to go into design view, expand my option group, and add a new option button to this option group. And let's do that. So the option button control is here. I'm going to click on it and then click inside this option group. And you can see when I'm inside the option group how visually that tells me, yes, you're adding that option button to this particular group. Now, no wizard helped guide me through this, so I've got to go into my property sheet and update it manually. I'm going to click my option button. And what data do I want it? I want it to be value five. Let's see, let's go let's change the caption property to yellow. And let's go ahead and use our format painter to take the formats from the green label and click and apply them to the yellow label. I'm going to click that option button, pull the format into the format painter, and then go ahead and paint that yellow option button. Now I've formatted all those option buttons similarly, and I can choose between them. So option Buttons, also called radio buttons. Users love them. They're very fast. They're very intuitive, but only use them sparingly when you have a small number of options for a field that very rarely change. Thank you.